working for a malaria-free world. Do you see this mosquito? No? Okay, here it is. It looks inoffensive, but its bite can trigger a disease that killed about 630,000 people in 2013. Malaria. It is one of the worst plagues in the world. In recent years, a lot of effort has been put into decreasing the number of infections. Still, more work is needed to improve its control and to move closer to overcoming the greatest challenge, eradicating the disease. Imagine a place where an illness has killed somebody in almost every family. After being bitten by infected mosquitoes, people feel weak, suffer headaches and kidney disorders, sweat, vomit, shake with fear and often end up dying. Most of the time they are children and pregnant women. Aside from personal suffering, malaria creates a large social and economic burden. Poverty and malaria together exacerbate inequalities. This is the current situation in many of the 97 countries in the world affected by malaria. It is the most significant infection caused by parasites in the world. It potentially affects about 3 billion people. Of every 10 victims, 9 are from the poorest area of the planet, Sub-Saharan Africa. It once hit Europe as well, but a set of interventions managed to eradicate it. If you blame all of this on mosquitoes, you are not completely correct. In fact, the cause of malaria is a parasitic microbe called Plasmodium that can infect a kind of mosquito called Anopheles. When a female Anopheles is pregnant, she hungers for human blood. If she is infected by Plasmodium and bites a person, the parasite spreads through the blood. Within a few minutes, it reaches the liver, where it multiplies and transforms. After a period of about a week, the parasite is released back into the blood. Throughout this process, called the incubation period, the person is not aware of what is happening. But after that, the parasite multiplies in the red blood cells and symptoms appear. When a mosquito bites an infected person, it sucks in the plasmodium and becomes infected and is thus ready to infect the next person it bites. The mosquito is therefore the vector, that is, the mean for transmitting the parasite from one human to the next. So, how can you fight against this disease? The simplest tools are bed nets and sprays. Still, a quarter of the people at risk do not even have access to these simple measures. Old anti-malarial drugs have progressively lost their effect because some parasite strains have become resistant to them. Luckily, new drugs have been developed and are now being administered successfully. Children up to five years of age who survive from repeated infections acquire natural immunity to the disease. It lasts throughout their entire life, except during pregnancy in the case of women. Scientists are working hard to understand how this immunity occurs. Understanding it would enable vaccines to be produced which are capable of generating immunity artificially. To date, an experimental vaccine tested in Africa has proven successful in more than half of the children who have received it. How can we help to defeat malaria? In the last 10 years, the money invested in fighting this disease has been increasing. And this may have contained the plague, but experts think that a further step is needed. Completely eradicating the epidemic is a moral obligation. Now, many organizations are putting the eradication of malaria at the top of their agendas. The Rollback Malaria Initiative, the Global Malaria Action Plan, and the Malaria Eradication Research Agenda are some examples. If this effort is considered a priority by more agents and also receives support from all of us, we might one day reach the dream of a malaria-free world. <laughs>